peace and light to the old guy Australia. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do this quickly and then I'm going to push pause so I can go and do a video. But I wanted to show you where I am today. And there's a reason why I am where I am today. It's a beautiful uh, 1080 beach. <clears throat> One of my favourite <clears throat> beaches on the south coast. It's well known but it's off the beaten track. It's about uh, three or four k's in. And I remember coming down here one day, I used to work for a builder, oh god, 1996, Ricky Halkett. I remember coming down here one day and we, um, we got to here and uh, we were gobsmacked. It was, it was just perfect, four to six foot, and uh, instead of going to work, we surfed pretty much half the day. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> now, Ricky's in Noosa now, unfortunately. <clears throat> so I'll just show you um, 1080 Beach. So this uh, looks all the way down south to Bermuda. You ready? Here we go. I'm doing it quickly because I don't want the wind to, uh, which will affect it. I'm sorry about that, but I'll do it quickly and then I'll push pause. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I lift it up as high as I can. Absolutely gorgeous. 1080 Beach. I'm going to push pause. So here's another look for you. I've come up on the top of the headland, so you can have a look at this. It's just stunning. <clears throat> Water's a bit uh, green from all the rain, but um, when I was newly married and we had the young kids, I used to go down to the beach down there at uh, you know, six o'clock in the morning. I'd surf, my wife and the kids would have breakfast, and, um, and uh, then I'd go to work. I could surf for like an hour, hour and a half. Pause again. Peace and that old guy Australia. Like, share, subscribe, Instagram, YouTube. I hope the volume's okay. We'll see how I go when I get it home and check it all through. This is going to be a two-part video. I'm only going to do it short, maybe 10 minutes each. Because it's too important a video for me not to do. And part of the reason I'm doing it is because the other day, um, I did a lengthy video. I was feeling a bit uh, flat. And uh, I was out in the bush and I did a fairly lengthy video, went for about half an hour, and I had so much feedback from it, you have no idea. I'm not kidding you. I'm maybe, I don't know, 60 or 80 messages from people. Um, and, and a good amount of those being men who wrote to me saying, wow, you know, at least you're being honest and, and upfront. So this one's going to be just as raw. And I'm going to tell you, in all honesty and truthfulness, what transpired since, and I hope you can relate to it. Don't be too, don't be too quick to judge. Um, just accept what I'm going to tell you, and uh, I don't care what you think of it. In as much as if you think less of me or whatever, it makes no difference to me. This is exactly what happened. What transpired? Now I did that video the other day, and I got home, and Joe had gone to Sydney, which he'd done because the builder was uh, doing some stuff, and Joe had to, you know, organise some things and whatever else. And as you see in her videos, uh, some friends came around to help do a bit of landscaping. Now on the duplex we're building and um, it's it's we'd spent so much time apart during the lockdowns that um, having it with me by my side for this amount of time we were about apart for about eight or nine months it was pretty horrible and um, so because I got stuck down the coast now one of the things was now that she'd been down here for the last uh, four or five six months it uh, resembled a normal kind of relationship in a lot of ways so that that was pretty good when she left <clears throat> I thought I'd be okay um, but in fact I got pretty lonely pretty quick because you're used to having someone around you know and it uh, and when they're not there for any extended period of time it it's just you know it's just not the same so so that's okay it's not a big deal but um, I'm simply saying it's when problems occur, it's almost like it's the render between huge besser blocks, and that breaks down. It's the little things that break down that cause the big problems, the big things to fail. People look for big issues in life, but it's, a, it's the little ones. You men, it's always the little ones. When it comes to women, it's the little things. Mounting and mounting and mounting, the little things. Not picking up your clothes, leaving the toilet seat up. Little things. No longer bringing them flowers, not having a date night, controlling the TV so you watch your sport all the time, not watching some chick flick, and if you do, making a big song and dance about it and pouting and carrying on. 
It's the little things, not opening the door, not going doing the shopping with her, moaning about going while she does some shopping, bitching about what she spends to, to buy some clothes, or whatever might be the case. All the little things that transpose and become this massive big thing. And that's when things go horribly pear-shaped. Now, with Joe going back to Sydney and now my own, um, it just meant I got stuck into work. And um, that particular morning when I did that video, I wasn't feeling great. And, and I could tell, as I said, I get a wheel on the ditch and a wheel on the track. I can feel things starting to slide a little. And, uh, and I went out the bush and did a little meditating and sat around and, and did my video and thought, right, oh, that's not so bad. Now, I do quote a few Bible scriptures, but don't worry about that too much in as much as, uh, you know, make of it what you will. There's some wonderful truths in there and some beautiful, beautiful uh, analogies and stories. So one of the sayings, I think it's from, um, I'm not sure where it's from, it doesn't matter, I used to know. It says, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for a foothold, seeking whom he may devour. Now, it's kind of like, if you want to think about it, it's that negativity, things that want to come against you. <clears throat> All they need is for you to open the door a fraction and they can come in. And if you allow them in and you entertain them, then they become boss of the house. And that's what happened to me. I went away from that day and I was thinking, yeah, no, I'm okay, I've got my shit together, not so bad, it's all good. And um, things got a little cloudy that night. I had to go to uh, work on the Saturday, I did that, and did some work at my daughter's house. And, and on Sunday, um, I, uh, I was gonna go and play this golf tournament um, with a mate of mine. And we didn't know what the golf tournament was. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I don't know why we just didn't. And so when we got there um, and I found out what it was, I was like, well, this is just not going to work. Uh, he's a pretty good golfer in his own right, as am I on my day. Um, but together we had to combine, you know, I won't go into details, but it was a foursome championship. And we were never going to combine well. We just weren't. We're just not that. Two different, completely style of game. So we knew from the get-go uh, when we took an eight on the first hole that <laughs> things were not going to go well over 27 holes. So my mood began to exacerbate and get darker. And by the time I'd finished, I just wanted to go home. I was just had enough. We'd shot 60,000 over par, and I just wanted to go home. And um, by the time I got home, which was only on Sunday last night, yesterday afternoon, I was, uh, I had this incredible emotive build-up. And um, Joe had sent me, uh, she posted footage about the moving dirt, eight and a half tonne of dirt from the front of the house. And of course, I was doing landscaping at the back of the house. And of course, I had this mental image that, as a guy, practical guy, this is what you would do, this is how you'd do it, that's what she would have done. And I had that in my head, because if I was there, that's what I would have done. But I wasn't there. And they didn't do it that way, they did it a different way, and for reasons that were, at the time, uh, un unknown to me. So when I found out that basically they'd moved eight and a half tonne of dirt from the front of the house, and made an eight and a half tonne of dirt pile out the back, <laughs> I just, I lost my shit. I, I was like, pfft, double handling just ridiculous you know what in god's name are you thinking you know, we don't because really what we want to do is get this finished and get it sold and get out of debt and get out of dodge that's basically what we want to do while the world's still revolving okay ish 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 before the big shit hits the fan which is coming no matter what you may think so more joe tried to explain it to me the bigger hole i dug for myself the darker i got the more morose i got the more combative I got you know the more rude I got you know it was just and it got to the point in the end where I had literally had a meltdown I'd lost control and I just couldn't care shit what I said I didn't care you know if it offended you or hurt you I didn't give a shit and so I was like up for the rent and uh, and then it was like my hands off you know really hands off now, there's a lot behind this, and I'll go into it in the second part of this video. But there's a lot behind what happened, and I'm not going to go into it in a lot of personal detail, but I will tell you 
a basic outline of what transpired and why I got myself to that point and what I failed to do about it correctly. Now in the second video I'm not going to you know, have too much of a preempt as I've done in this one. There won't be any footage of the beautiful coastline. I'll go straight into it. So make sure you stay tuned.